Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Cora. Welcome. And so today we're going to be doing a kitchen island makeover. So I saw this dresser on the Facebook marketplace and so we picked it up. So my husband knew how much work I was going to be putting into this and how much money an epoxy was basically going to go to the top of part of it to refinish it. So he told me if I could talk them down to 50 bucks, he'd go pick it up. They so kindly agreed and they showed him this really handy dandy moving type accessory that helps save your back. So I'll insert that to show you guys. It was really cool. They were super sweet. And anyways, we picked this piece up and got right to work. It already conveniently had the sides on the um, end of it that had a towel rack and one end was for pick towel rack. So that was perfect. So the first thing we did was we picked up some wheels and we went ahead and we installed that. We put six of them on there evenly to kind of help distribute the weight of it because it is pretty heavy and sturdy. Using a compatible size drill bit, he drilled six holes into the base of the dresser and then we added in the little pieces that you have to kind of hammer in so that the wheels would then click into that. So it's a little bit of a system. Pretty easy though, as you can see here. Yes, now it spins, good job. Here, hold the block behind it, maybe. So that'll give you some, yeah, oomph. And then the next thing we did is we primed it all and painted everything with just primer. Shake your booty. Shake, shake, shake. This is really awkward. I'm totally shaking, watching you shake your booty, too. It's not like other stuff. Oh. Hope that's not. Using some of my favorite products and of course my gripper primer which was tinted gray by the fine gentleman at Home Depot and my husband's genius. Um, so we are going to be using that coating the entire thing. My husband's going to use a roller and cover most of the flat surfaces with the roller and then I'm going through with a little paintbrush and I'm kind of really edging in on the edge of these doors here because I want them to be able to close and not get stuck. They do have prior coats of paint and since I didn't sand them down and I'm just going over them I want it to be a very thin coat of primer thin being key okay so moving on after we get all of this nice and primed then we will move on to the epoxy and painting the rest of the base So don't worry, the hubby is still alive as of now, but we are going to finish priming and then move on, maybe have a meal or so, and then we are going to move on to doing the epoxy the next day. We do want to let this primer get nice and dry before messing with it so it doesn't peel or come off. Next thing that we did is we took some epoxy and what we did is the top of it had some sort of like an indentation, almost like a faux stone or tile type of a detail. So we're filling that in with some epoxy to help smooth that out a little bit. Once that's cured, we're going to smooth the top out and then I'm going to do a little epoxy pour kind of thing to the top of the kitchen island. So that way it's just as durable as my kitchen counters and it's going to be stunning hopefully. We're, the colors I'm hoping to go with are like a navy blue or dark type of color on the bottom and then I want to do the top of it like the marble or granite, very light colors, a lot like the table here and the other videos that you've seen that I've done. So that is the game plan. That is the steps that we're going to be doing. So I'll insert all of that and show you all the steps as we go. And yeah, so stay tuned for the end and you'll see that. So we decided that it would be wise for us to move this project into an isolated room. So we took this into my daughter's room where she wouldn't have to worry about sleeping in there for a while. So that way we could close the door and keep the cats and the kids from getting in here and messing up the epoxy. Can you close that door for me, please? Mom, he's wearing his little hat. Mm. He looks like this. Mm. Hey, babe, will you get me some gloves from underneath the sink and paper towels? You don't, don't touch anything. You stay right there. Don't move. Don't touch anything. Mm. 
So when it comes to pouring the epoxy, of course you wanna have everything below you prepared and covered with plastic or whatever to be protected. And then you wanna use some sort of disposable or plastic type of measuring devices because you want to make sure that the epoxy isn't going to stick to it or ruin whatever you're using. If it's something you're wanting to keep, I wouldn't use it for epoxy. I like to use these little plastic cups. I like to measure them evenly out and then I'll mix them both into a bigger cup to mix my both parts A and B together. I'm going to add a little bit of this gray to tint this particular epoxy just to blend it in and camouflage it. My hubby doesn't know that, so it's funny. Watch his reaction. Will you go grab the torch in the office? It's in my project room up on that shelf that I built under my little hole thingy. Well, I just want you to find it. By the window to the right. Now all I'm doing here is I'm filling in this tinted epoxy into these grooves just to kind of level out the top a little bit more so that way when I go to pour my next layer of epoxy I can kind of cover it up a little bit because it is raised quite a bit in some parts and I really want this to be a nice level smooth glass like finish so it's going to need a layer maybe even two layers of epoxy. I find out later that I'm going to end up adding another layer anyways because I ended up kind of fudging up and adding a little too much glitter because I guess in some cases there is such thing as too much glitter. So yes, I fudged up, but it's okay because there was parts of it that I didn't like anyways and I wanted to fix it. So that gave me a chance to go ahead and add more depth and yeah, yada yada yada, I'll explain later. Using this Kills white chalk paint to cover up this layer here. Because I'm going for more of a white aesthetic look of stone type finish on the top or whatever you want to call it, I want to just do a white base. It doesn't need to be perfect, pretty, it's going to be actually kind of streaky. It's just because I want to save more uh, color and epoxy later, so adding the white down here below it, giving it more of a base, kind of just helps camouflage and blend it later so I can use less product and epoxy later. Don't forget to get the sides also. That's something you don't want to forget or neglect. Once everything is dry, you're gonna go ahead and get all of your supplies ready. You're going to want to definitely tape off around the edges if there's something below it that you don't wanna get epoxy on and around. If there's something maybe around you you wanna protect, put plastic down on there too. So I'm using the silver lining, just black acrylic, um, some white paint. I'm using this pearl silver pigment, this uh, macro pearl, which is like a pearly white pigment kind of like a seashell pearl if that makes sense and then you've got like you need lots and lots of gloves you've got your epoxy you need some clear disposable cups um, foam brushes are, are optional and whatever other tools I recommend a squeegee or something maybe a paintbrush or a roller works too I, I have used a roller in the past and that works wonderfully so all sorts of options there to smooth this out over the edges and that's just to kind of assist it to the edge but you definitely certainly don't want to be pushing it over because you don't have enough because remember you want to be very generous so first off i am just filling the cups with the pigment or color that the, each cup is going to be once we mix the epoxy we're going to pre-mix some clear epoxy into separate containers and then we're going to pour it into all of these colors mix those up and then we'll have a larger container of the base color of epoxy. So I am going to put in the, all of these cups, the base, and then in one of them I'm going to put white paint and that pearl pigment to give it a white pearly look. I really love that finish, so I recommend that if you want sort of a I don't know, marbly sheen to it. So yeah, when it comes to the epoxy, you want equal parts of both. A little bit more of the part B or the hardener won't hurt 
if you accidentally get too much of that in there, but if you get too much of the A or just the resin portion, it will come out sticky or gooey and it won't really harden as nice as you'd like it to. So anyways, once those are all mixed up, you wanna move quickly. What I have learned in the past is that the silver pigment, for some reason, has a weird reaction and it will get hard and cures much faster than the other colors. But there's also somebody who reached out to me who is doing it with white and hers looked like a little nuclear reactor. I'll insert pictures of both of our situations so you can kind of get the idea. But yeah, when it comes to this epoxy, what it does is it gets hard, or I mean, it gets hot. And so as it warms up and it gets hot, it's, uh, it, that makes it harden even faster. So you want to work as fast. So that's why you'll see my husband has stepped in over here and he is pre-mixing another batch because I need that to go for the large batch of the white, which I'm going to add into the larger tub on the end. And that's going to be not only for my major base coat, but also to go in and kind of do like little veins and accent shades and highlights and low lights, etc. So once you've got all of your tubs and your paint colors and your whatever pigments you're adding and your base colors and epoxy is ready, you want to clear up your surface and then you want to make sure you probably switch out your gloves just because they're probably going to be sticky and you don't want to get that on anything because that's why I said you want to have a lot of gloves. You always want to keep changing out your gloves so you're not touching or contaminating and getting on everything. You go ahead and you lay out your white base coat and once that one is down, I'm going to start smoothing that out and then if you do have somebody who can come and help you, they can come in and uh, lay some more colors or just kind of go around the edge and help you pull it onto the end. I'll show you guys a couple of close-ups here so you can see that the epoxy will self-level on its own. So all I'm doing here is just kind of spreading out the color to kind of, I don't know, this is what kind of gives it that marbly look where it just naturally blends and bleeds over into the other. I do recommend and I did learn from this particular experience that having something more of a flat edge like either a rolling brush or a squeegee type thing or a ruler would work, a paint stir, something like that is better to help smooth out these lines rather than a brush or a foam brush because I did find that the foam brush kind of muddied it up. And so because of that, I decided that this particular coat was going to be a middle coat. It was going to be a layer and a dimension coat, if that makes sense. So I like to allow at least one full day in between each layer of epoxy. So the first time that we did the epoxy just to fill in the indents from that stone like texture top, that took a day. Then um, going through doing this coat here is going to take a day. And then the next coat that I do is going to be a very, very, very clear with just a tint of white and maybe even a little bit of pearl, I don't know, we'll see, um, over the top of that next one. And I might even add a couple of little pearl colors, whatever, into that, but it very, very, very little because I want you to be able to see the layer underneath, which will be this layer here. So because this layer here, as you can see here, it started to get muddy and I realized that. So because this layer here got muddy, I knew I wanted to add some darker, richer veins into this particular layer so that they would show through the next layer that I plan to do on over top of it. So that's the thing with the epoxy. You can just kind of layer over top, multiple layers, multiple layers. Um, I am also going to add in a little bit of silver foil into one of the layers because I do want it to have a natural looking, you know how some of the stones you see will have that natural silver, very beautiful looking little flakes or something into it. Well, I wanted that too. So I kind of fudged up on this particular coat as you'll see in a little while where I added glitter to it and I did add too much. I know I didn't think there was such a thing, but there really is guys. But so I added some glitter to this particular layer and I needed to cover that one up also, but I did want the silver leaf to show up and that came out actually gorgeous. I was having a hard time finding silver leaf at the local stores around here, like Hobby Lobby and whatever. So I ended up finding some, believe it or not, on the Wish app. I ordered them for nail foils in like this multiple colored thing, which you'll see in a little bit. And it cost me like a dollar and like a dollar for shipping. So two bucks, whatever. So I'm keeping that for my nails. And then I did use the silver fur on this particular coat here or um, on this particular table here. But um, I ended up finding the actual silver leaf that I was looking for at Hobby Lobby a couple weeks later, or not a couple weeks later, like uh, two weeks later, because I had looked for silver leaf for a, a project in the past 
that I was doing for the wall decor photos and pictures and stuff that we were making, the art, and I couldn't find them then. I looked hard, I even asked them and they didn't have any, but then all of a sudden they had them this time and they were in a place that I hadn't looked last time. So they must have recently got them in stock, so if you wanna go check those out, I will insert some photos of both a gold one that I found and a silver leaf like sheet that I found. So you have options now. Anyway, so when it comes to veining and all of that stuff, I just poured the darker vein on there and then you just kind of, you wanna blend that out by putting another layer on top of it. And then I found that using this stick or this dowel worked beautifully for blending out and making natural looking veins. This layer actually ended up turning out really, really well. To be honest with you, if I hadn't messed it up with the glitter that I add later, which my husband didn't know about, um, I probably would have left it looking like this. It was actually not too bad. It actually came out gorgeous, but I ended up ad adding another layer on top of it because I did find that some of these veins that were going in the other directions weren't my favorite. Most of the time you do want veins all going in one direction, but that doesn't have to be the rule. In nature, you'll always find that. Sometimes things break and crack and you have things that aren't perfect. So whoever's telling you that things need to be this way or that way, find me something in nature that's absolutely perfect other than animals and flowers. And I'll call you, I'll, I'll show you a liar. So again, just a quick reminder to make sure you pay attention and tend to the sides. Now here's a close-up of what this looks like and as you can see, some of this looks okay and some of it looks a little muddy and uh, sloppy. So I'm taking this little wooden dowel and I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to kind of fix or blend out some of the parts that I didn't like so much. So the end result did come out okay, but then it's time to go ahead and add the glitter. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a few minutes or a few moments how that's gonna come out and how I kind of ruined it. But I am using the little sponge and I'm kind of blending in some of the sides here so it looks like these veins are traveling down because once again, when I do put up that top layer of the opaque um, or the slightly opaque uh, white on top of it later, I want some of these veins to actually show through that. Something else that I really like to do is use a torch or some sort of a heat gun. You, some people use a hair dryer or um, other things like that. Just be careful you don't blow any type of hair or debris into it. But anyways, this is really good to get that nice and smooth glass-like finish. It pops any of the bubbles that have arisen to the surface after, after some time. So after I've done that, I also will come through periodically and smooth out the edges so that the epoxy doesn't create any of these little drip-like... Um, droplets on the bottom of edge of the surface that I'm working on. So as you can see, this turned out really nice. After going through with that dowel and kind of breaking up those veins a little bit more, I really, really, really like how this one turned out. Unfortunately, I'm about to add some glitter. I normally do this in all of my projects, so I don't know why for this time, for some reason, I put too much on my hand and just went ham on it because it was too much. Even when I covered it with the next layer, you can still see some of it through. Like one of the time down here at this end, it just all kind of blew off. I don't know what happened. It was too much though. Anyways, I know I'm gonna cover it, so I did end up saving it and salvaging the, the project, but ugh. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I decided to add some silver foil to this project, and this is what I'm talking about. So this is the nail foils that I picked up from the wish.com wish app on my phone, and it came pretty quickly. I was pretty pleased. So I am actually using this to put it on some of these edges and sprinkle it on to some of the spots that I didn't kind of screw up with the glitter because those spots I will kind of leave exposed and showing when I do the next layer of my clear coat. The reason I'm doing this now is because I know another layer is going over top of it and I don't want any of these foils to be at the top of the epoxy preventing the epoxy from going over it. I do want a layer of epoxy going over it because I want this entire surface to be completely smooth so that it's a work surface and something that I can cook on like rolling out dough and making food and things like that. So now I'm going to show you a close up of both the foil and the glitter screw up. So the foil looks beautiful. I'm trying to give you a good angle, but nothing will do it justice. Like, I don't even know if in the finale I'm going to be able to do it justice. It's gorgeous, which my husband even was like, wow. But the glitter, it took him a while. He didn't even notice the glitter until actually just yesterday. 
he saw a little bit of it shining through and he goes, wait, what's that? And I was like, oh, that was just like glitter in my top. It's kind of why I went over blah, blah, blah. So yada, yada, yada. You, God, I wish you guys could see it. But anyways, this looks so gorgeous. I'm sad that I have to cover it up, but I did salvage and show and keep the foil part to show through on the next layer because it was so sheer. I don't know why I kept saying the word opaque earlier. I meant to say sheer was the word I was looking for. So yeah, here's the closest up that I could get and trying to show you guys all of that glitter too where it just kind of looks like pepper or dirt in there. And some of it was iridescent so it just looks like I've got a bunch of hollow glitter iridescent on there. I mean, ugh, it was just a mess. I wish I hadn't done that because this was looking so pretty and a clear coat would have just sealed the deal on this. But now I'm going to go through with something else, uh, put that next layer on, and then I am going to seal it with another clear coat because I just really want it nice and smooth. And then it's time to start painting, which I'm going to make a custom blend. So now that I've allowed this particular coat to dry overnight and I've come to terms with the fact that I ruined it with all of the glitter, I'm going to go ahead and add a sheer coat of the white of the silver lining aka gray and then I'm going to do another separate one with just a little bit of the pearl pigment again. Um, it's not going to be like a solid and all the work that I did like on this particular coat underneath. It's all going to be very 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 sheer very simple overlay just kind of pouring it smoothing it out and then letting it kind of settle out on its own. I'm going to let this one cure again overnight and then the next day I'm going to add another clear coat on top, just one simple thick clear coat to seal it all in, just to make sure that none of the foils and stuff that I put on the coat underneath are poking through because I don't want anything to get into food. I really want this to be food safe and I want the surface to be 100% smooth. So as you can see here, I'm just smoothing out the white and it looks pretty white here, but once I thin it out with my squeegee, it comes out pretty thin. Like you can see the veins showing through underneath this coat that was my goal. I wanted it to be super, super thin so you can still see the silver foils and all that veining and all that beneath it. I think it really gave it dimension and really added to it. So the second layer really popped and was awesome too. So whether you like the first one and you want to stop there and not ruin it like I did with the glitter mistakes and you can just put a clear coat over it and leave it at that. Or if you mess up, you can always do like I'm doing and just add another coat over top. I get that question a lot. What do you do if you mess up? Well, if you do mess up or you didn't put enough epoxy, you've got dimples or shrinkage or you just don't like it, just go over it. You could either paint over it or epoxy over it. You've got options. Just like with the last coat of epoxy, I'm going to smooth this one out. I'm going to come back and torch it to get out any of the bubbles that have shown up to the surface after some time. And then I'm going to come back periodically and smooth out the edges because you do not want to neglect the edges. The one dead giveaway that this is epoxy or isn't real stone could be those little droplets on the edge where someone could see it and be like, what is that? And then you have to explain, you're like, oh, but to fool a person, go ahead and smooth those edges out. And I will show you in the end, in the finale, how the finale like this is some like grand finale but in the final um photos i will show you how the edges are smoothed out and how i'm paying close attention to those and this is the best one by far and it looks so much like stone i am so impressed with how this one turned out it's definitely the best one so now that i've allowed this one to smooth out and settle out i just wanted to show you up close you can still see that glitter popping through so don't worry and i think i kind of did go back and add like one or two little sprinkles and over this coat too Shh, don't tell anybody but i just i kind of had to have it i didn't overdo it this time i just wanted a couple to sprinkle through so i added that last minute anyways here it is not in the best of light because of course this light does it no justice but i do love how natural and stony it looks and how you can see those veins underneath oh it's just stunning i'm gonna let you guys enjoy this for a moment and then i'm gonna put some clear coat on okay so we are closing in on day like four, maybe five, three, four, five, I don't know. I've lost count at this point. So it is time to add a clear coat. I'm gonna go ahead and mix those up and then we're going to pop on that last clear coat. I will torch it, smooth out the edges periodically the same. And yeah, 
we're going to go ahead and move on to custom painting after this. I just wanted to show all of the steps that I went through to achieve this exact look in case I got questions for it. So you can stop at either layer. You could even hand paint it and then just do a clear coat over the top or you could just, I don't know, you could do this in so many different ways. I've seen people even use spray paint to kind of get a little bit of the metallic spray into it on some of the stone videos. Uh, but I really wanted this like granite, marble, it's more marble, less granite look. And I think I achieved it. It is my favorite. Let me know what you guys think down below if you've watched any of my other epoxy or granite or marble type of videos. And tell me which one has been your favorite so far. She's primed and ready to go. We've got three coats of epoxy on top. Two were layers of just different colors, which you'll see, and then the last one was a clear coat to seal everything in. I did use a little bit of epoxy initially, too, to kind of blend in and smooth over that weird textured stone look that was on top to just help with the smoothing. But isn't it just beautiful? This is doing it no justice. I will get better pictures and lighting in a little bit. Okay guys, I'm going to be making and putting together my own kind of paint color. So I've worked on a couple of swatches and I really liked one that was a combination of some of these. Let me show you. It was this metallic-y blue, kind of with a little bit of green, but I don't want to go this much metallic. I kind of want to go to this layer, right in between. So I'm going to add and make sure that I add a little bit more of the silver lining to tone it down. So what I'm gonna do is mix up a little batch in my jar here, and then if I have too much or extra left over, I'll put it in my handy dandy leftover Talenti jar there. But I'm gonna mix together most of this with a portion of this, it's one of the metallics one. I don't wanna do too much of it because I don't want it to make the paint too thick and finicky, but I do want a little bit of that shimmer. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of the black to darken it up because this is just a wee bit too much. So let's go ahead oh, and get started. So as far as this custom color goes, I am starting out with some of this silver lining, adding some of this metallic blue, a little bit of black, and then I'm going to add a little bit of white. And I ended up adding a little bit of that pearl pigment to it too, just to give it a little bit more of that sheen, which didn't really do much, so it's kind of a waste. Anyways, I mix all that up and I'm gonna put that onto the dresser and give that two nice full coats. And then I'm going to make my gunmetal glaze and apply that for the final touches. So just like with the primer, with the paint, I'm going through and I'm carefully doing a very smooth finish around the doors so that way they don't get stuck or jammed up. So I did a very thin coat there and then I'm going to go ahead and just give everything nice full two coats. It came out looking really nice. I did get the cat's approval, they supervised, and then it was time to go ahead and put on just a clear coat of wax first. I do this because this is like going to seal in the work that I've already done and then it allows me to have kind of like a little barrier between the sealed in work that I've done and the next layer that I'm about to put on like the glaze. So that way while I'm putting on the glaze if for instance I make a mistake or I don't like something I can go back through using wax to remove it which is a little bit of a trick. It's kind of like a wax on wax off kind of thing but if you make a mistake you can use wax to kind of rub it off as well. So that's why it's okay to go ahead and put in a clear coat barrier in between. You can leave it there and stop there if you like the look of just the plain sealed in simple color or if you want to go for more of a rustic look you can keep going and add this glaze. To make the glaze I put together a little bit of that natural wax. I add some black paint and some of that silver metallic paint. I blend that together and if it isn't quite right I'll add a little bit more of the silver until I get the look that I'm going for. Then you go ahead and you wipe it on 
and then you take like a paper towel or a cloth or another sock if you want and then you wipe it off. I tend to use socks when I'm doing my wax projects as you saw me do with my clear coat because I usually have one that's astray because who knows what's happened to the other one, the dryer eats it or whatever. So for the ones that are lost and can't seem to find their partner, I use them for projects like this for easy cleanup. You can go through, you put a little bit of wax on and then you wax off. The more you rustic and distressed that you want it to look, the more you fill in the little cracks and the grooves. Now if you have a lot of kids running around, you have animals or whatever, you can probably just leave this as is and let them do the job for you, which is why I'm only doing a light coat of the glaze and not such a heavy coat and I'm not distressing it with any kind of sanding or anything like that because my kids and my cats will certainly do that job for me because after all that is what the distressed look is isn't it it's really just life happening and people are like oh it's so cute and it has character yeah because it was lived in kids like destroyed it because well that's what they are good at love them to pieces but we don't have nice things while they are young <laughs> anyways so once you're done waxing on waxing off and getting all the looks that you want if for instance you find that there's a spot that you don't like like say there was just a little bit too much glaze you can go in and put a little bit of that clear wax on and as you'll notice here it's going to remove that dark glaze in this area that I didn't like very much so just a little trick for you because I did want it to look more of like uh, had highlights and then it was kind of darkened around just the edges so yeah that's the look I was going for I kind of messed up so I went back and I kind of just erased and removed some of it and voila so once I worked my way around the entire dresser or island I decided to step back take a look at it get a couple of different angles and the lighting and then I went back and I did any adjustments that were necessary if I felt spots that I thought needed to be a little bit darker I'd go back and I'd add a little bit more darken it up there if it needed to be a little bit lighter I used the wax techniques that, that I just showed you where you can kind of like take a little bit of it off because you want to do all of this while the wax is still kind of setting because once it starts to cure or harden which does happen kind of quickly but once it starts to cure or harden it, be it acts kind of like a seal it's almost like putting on a clear coat of uh, like a polycrylic or something it will actually get hard and it will seal it like to the point where you can even wipe things off of it like if something gets gunky on it you can use like a wet wipe to wipe it off and it's going to protect your work underneath obviously over time you'll want to maybe refinish it or you can even add just another clear coat over your work just to continue to protect it but anyways here's a couple of views of the lighting in different lighting to kind of show you because for some reason in my kitchen our lighting is terrible so I tried to show you with different shadows and lights and whatever but this is how I do like straight edges and so you can kind of see that you see me going back through and adding any little touch-ups and then I'm leaving the doors and the drawers open while it's curing so that it doesn't cure closed if you've got just a little bit of wax on there and you close it and it dries closed it's gonna be really hard to open so anyways, go ahead and enjoy the last little bit and then we're going to show you some final clips. I also lined the inside of these drawers with some contact paper and wiped out the insides and then we're storing pots and pans and cooking and baking hardware. Okay, so as you're seeing now, I'm inserting some photos of it with different lighting. Um, because the lighting is so wonky in the kitchen, I'm showing you without my ring light so you can kind of see it in dimmer lighting so you can kind of get the effects of the shading and the tabletop and then I'm going to add different photos with the ring light lighting and different flashes just so you can kind of see the shine, the sparkle, I want you to see the little silver leaf. I'm going to show you different videos and different clips and then at the very end I'll show you us actually like using it to cook and whatnot with some little fun clips at the end. So go ahead and enjoy these last few clips and videos and whatnot and yeah let me know what you guys think down below what changes you've got or suggestions you would make I left the hardware that was on there already because it kind of blends in with the dark color and I also protected any of the wood that was on the inside because it was just a beautiful beautiful color it was left in very good condition thanks to the previous owners who took very good care of it also and it matches our floors like perfectly so it helps bring this colorful island piece into our dark black gray white house theme so i love it i like having a pop of color finally i love the drawers that are now all lined with fresh contact paper and have all of our baking hardware and stuff inside of it 
it is so convenient and we just roll it in when we want to cook and we roll it back over to this wall to get it out of the way if we want to put dishes away or whatever so it's kind of nice that it's not permanent in place because then it would get in the way and I can see why having an island in between your dishwasher and your cabinets could be a pain in the butt so enjoy guys Well guys, I hope you like how the kitchen island makeover turned out. If you do like the kitchen island, let me know below if there's things you would change or details you would add. Let me know your ideas down below in the comment section. We do want to add some other details to it. We will along the lines, but for now, this is what we've got. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye. Maybe I should do this and harass you. I'm recording. Get this new video. <laughs> That was all a part of the plan, more or less. We saw that. What do you have to say for yourself? It's an onion. I don't care. So what would be cool to do with this here? Maybe have this open up. And oh, a trash can? Trash can yeah. pull out and just... Yep. Let me just say. Jeez. My idea. Open this. Open this and have a trash can pull out. And it would be even more interesting if I had a cutting board extender that I somehow got in there. Oh shit, that's not healthy, but it looks so good.
Did you even try it? 